it looks now that there have been four allegations uh, against this presenter. Yeah, uh, I mean, just a, a flood of allegations now coming forward, which does make you really question uh, how feasible it is for this presenter in question to um, remain anonymous, really. Look, on many levels, the BBC is now looking bad on this. For one, you, you just played a, a, an interview out that uh, the Director General gave to the world at one. The fact that the BBC all of us broadcasters who have been outside of here have asked, have put in requests uh, again and again to speak to the Director General. And the fact that he has only given an interview to his own people, that is not a look good look for the BBC. But also, they now look bad for how slowly they acted in terms of addressing uh, that initial complaint. To take seven weeks before they actually uh, spoke to the presenter in question. We now know from that timeline that you, uh, we were given yesterday that you just explained. The in initial investigations team, they only sent one email and made one phone call that didn't connect to the initial complainant in order to try to verify this claim. So they did very little in terms of uh, following this up until the, the claims actually came out in the sun. But as well as that, they now look bad, of course, because you have this hypocrisy element coming into it. The BBC was the institution that uh, delivered all of the rules to the BBC, that set out what we should be doing during lockdown. And to now know that this uh, presenter in question was breaking these COVID rules. Well, again, now the BBC looks hypocritical on this and just how feasible it is uh, to argue that it isn't in the public interest to name this person. Well, I think now, really, the pressure is on the BBC to perhaps uh, answer our questions uh, and be a bit more open about this.